Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about the DJI FPV drone and also some other quadcopters that I found very interesting that are already out and some are coming out. So let's get started here with the DJI really quickly. Now the DJI, obviously I didn't get one and I'm not planning on purchasing one. There's no way in hell I'd buy one. Even if I had 50 grand or 10 grand in my pocket to throw away, I still wouldn't buy one because I think it's a waste of money, at least for myself. Now, let me finish this. Now, there are good things and bad things about this, in my opinion, again, and I'd like to hear yours down below. So the first thing is this thing is not going to last for very long. A couple crashes, maybe one crash, you're going to break something. And it's all plastic. And we all know that FPV and plastic don't get along unless you're on a super tiny mic or then you'll probably be OK. However, in this form factor with all that weight and some of that speed, it's just it's not going to play really nicely. However, due to the DJI FPV drone, we've gotten a huge influx of new people into the hobby or trying out the hobby, we should say, because uh, the way I measure this is due to my upload my build videos and also my basic setup guides. I've been noticing a lot of comments there, a lot of views there. So that's how I kind of measure that. Yes, we're getting an influx of new people here trying to understand, trying to figure it out. And um, that's a good thing. That's really great. But I really hope none of those really screwed up for the rest of us um, in future days so we'll see how that goes out um, one thing I really like about this thing is obviously the recording capability is really nice something we'd expect and yeah it has to have that now that's a mandatory thing uh, but the flight time 20 minutes now for a 20 minute flight time without wind which I think you'll probably never get but um, I really want to kind of replicate the setup I mean in terms of kV and battery in size, I want to decrease because I think we could build one that will fly even better and faster and, and even longer, probably. Um, but yeah, it's running a 2000 milliamp battery here, and it seems to be a uh, battery type LiPo 6S. So it's a 6S, really? So that is interesting. I did, was not expecting it running a 6S. I was expecting maybe a lithium ion 5S for some reason, uh, maybe because of their previous ones. But that is pretty interesting. It's running a 2000 milliamp 6S battery in there. It should theoretically fly for a bit more than what it's flying for, but I guess the weight has a lot to do with it. I'm very curious to test out the KV on these motors if I ever get my hands on one. Anyways, uh, this is 850 and it seems to be without anything. It's just the quadcopter itself. Now, um, yeah, I don't know what you think of that. Let us know down in the comment section. Now let's move on. So and again, everything is linked down below in the order we check them out. So here we have a new micro from Emacs and it's the Emacs Baby Hawk 2. And these usually tend to fly actually really nicely and very quietly, I would say. I don't know how this is going to fly, obviously, because I haven't flown it, but it is rocking 3.5 inch propellers. So the probability of it flying pretty amazing is higher than usual because it's running 3.5 inch propellers on something this small is, is usually a really nice uh, setup actually. Um, those are my favorite actually. So that looks really great. We're rocking 25 amp ESCs, 4S, really good as well. 4S, wow, that's really nice. And it's rocking the HD Vista. So that explains possibly why they went for the 3.5 inch because I think if you went for a two or anything below two, it'd just be terrible or very low flight time, especially carrying that Cadex Vista for the HD in there. Now there are two different variants, but I think the only difference between them is going to be the uh, the receiver. Let's go ahead and double check this together. Yeah, it's just the receiver here. So 300 bucks without, that's actually pretty expensive, no? For a micro, $300. Wow, that's insane. Um, so yeah, well, yeah. 1404-3700 KV motors. Hopefully it flies good. Now, another thing I found really interesting was this right here. So LDARC, if you don't know this, it's kind of, I don't want to say mid-range, I just want to say mid-range hit and miss, kind of. Sometimes you'll have a thing or two blow out pretty quickly. Um, and I don't know how it is now because we haven't seen any of their stuff in quite a while. So they're recently, I guess, coming back here. So here what we see is just basically a three-inch quadcopter. I wish they had more pictures. A three-inch quadcopter and a ball. Now, I'm really loving the ball thing. And I wish we could buy that separately because I'd just buy a ton of those. And then I'd train a swarm of quadcopters to fly in my shop because I just got a GPS, indoor GPS system for this stuff, uh, which we're going to be playing around with later on. But this is, um, yeah, it's just interesting to me, I guess. Maybe it's interesting to somebody out there. It's really nice you can fly indoors, but don't expect to fly it outdoors and enjoy it. Um, but you could probably come up with some creative games to do with this. So Hollybro hasn't released anything in quite some time. 
And what we see here today is they have the new Copus Scene Whoop, 2.5 inches. I wish it was three, but that's fine. As we can tell, it's a pusher uh, quadcopter here, and it's kind of sharing the same characteristic as the scene log that we saw, where it had the rubber O-rings, but here it seems like it's just completely... So the camera seems to be hanging off with the 3D printed part, both the main camera and the HD camera that you'll be adding on here. Now, the overall design looks pretty nice. That looks like 3 millimeter carbon fiber right here. The carbon fiber is pretty good. As we can tell, no uh, 3D printed parts, which is something to actually expect from Hollybro. If not, then uh, you, I start having second thoughts and doubts. And the overall layout looks pretty clean, actually. I think they've balanced it very well here. Look at the capacitor right there. That's really nice. Let's check out the KV here. So it's rocking Kakute F4 V2. And obviously it's an F4. And we have a barometer. So if you need a barometer for some reason, you got that. Tico 32 F3 ESCs. I think it's a 4 in 1. Yeah, it's a 4 in 1 here. And what else do we have? We have 1404 3800 KV 3 to 4S. So it's kind of nice that we were able to push 3 to 4S. So here we go. Again, like I mentioned earlier, LDARC is coming back here. And let's go ahead and take a look at what they have. So it is an HD camera, F4 25 amp 4S. It is also a 2 inch with higher KV than the Copus and a lower or smaller size motor here. And let's go ahead and take a look at just some of the specs here. How much does it cost? 280 bucks. Uh, I wouldn't buy for 280, especially from that company. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what else we have. So yeah, here's the DJI FPV, the complete kit for 1.5K. That's not including um, import tax and customs. So we're looking at probably 170, no, actually probably a bit more than that. If you're in Europe, probably 1,800, probably 1,800 to $1,900. Um, not converted to European, but in dollars, that's around how much you'd have to pay, around 26%, if not more. Again, it depends on your location. Uh, you are UAV Flippo. So I don't think that's really interesting, actually. So also the recon, I still haven't flown it. I still have it right next to me. I'm waiting for the weather to clear up and the coronavirus lockdown to clear up. But yeah, it's it's um, it's waiting. It's waiting there. This one, I wanted to see this one. This is from T-Motor. So it looks... I hate, I hate these propellers. When I see these propellers, I just think of how cheap they are. Usually because cheap quadcopters come with these propellers. All right, let's see what makes this thing unique. So it costs 270 bucks for, oh, it's three inch. So that's a nice sign right here. And I saw something really interesting down here, which is flight time can be six to seven minutes on an, I'll say thousand milliamp now. So it's using 1103, 8,000 KV. I like 8,000 KV. That's my favorite sweet spot there. Four inch propellers and it's supposed to be on a 4S here. So the thing they said six to seven minutes, it doesn't say what kind of, or what, at least what size battery, or I haven't found what size battery we should use. Now, I'm guessing this is going to be running on a 3S because the all-in-one here, ESC, only takes 3S maximum. Oh, there it is. So on a 453S milliamp LiPo, you should be able to get six to seven minutes. Now, if I get five minutes, four and a half minutes, I'm happy. And uh, especially carrying that Vista on something that small. And if it flies decent, that's all, that's awesome. Uh, that would be actually really great. But I don't think anything could really reach that without it being actually a 6S quadcopter, in my opinion. Kind of like that AGLRC Pertel. Man, that thing is insane. Insane. This one's insane too, by the way. I just didn't like the setup. Something, like, something about it I didn't like. I think it was just so finicky. So here we have something from SPC Maker. Now, if you don't know SPC Maker, back then they used to make some of the best micros for quite a short while, maybe three months. Ago, they were releasing some really nice stuff, actually. That was insane. Like, it was a micro performing like a 5-inch, which we haven't seen anything like that back then. And now they're coming back, but I don't know how they're coming back. So let's just take a look at this. So this is a complete kit. They're trying to do the Emax route here and maybe the beta FPV route. You get a controller. Uh, you don't even get goggles. You get a screen, charger, and two batteries and the quadcopter. Let's take a look at the quadcopter, actually. So we get an F4 quadcopter. It's all in one with 20 amp ESCs here. And yes, we just read that. 11,000 KV. Holy shit, that's going to be a screamer. So it's 1103, 11,000 KV. But yeah, this this is not how the good ones look like, by the way, uh, when they were making them. Uh, so it's basically all plastic with a bit of carbon fiber. Hmm... Is that a Huawei? What does Huawei have to do with anything here? And what is this? App parameters? What? Okay. 
So they're trying to think outside the box here, maybe like a starter kit for beginners, but I don't know how good this would be. How much is it? 280? Oh, it's kind of acceptable, I think, but maybe you could probably find some other better stuff as well. Holy crap, there's so many new things. Uh, just to let you know, Sky Zone at Marcy. Yes, good thing they've actually put Sky Zone now. I've actually flown this. I don't even know if I ever released a video. The D135 Pro is absolutely insane. I really like it. It performs like the HLRC ones, the good ones. So that's really nice. For 135 bucks, you can't go wrong with that, um, in my opinion. It's really nice. But it doesn't come with a receiver and uh, documentation. It's pretty just the box and the, and the quadcopter and a couple spare parts. Uh, it is carbon fiber though, and it's a one-piece bottom plate, by the way. So I'll just have that link down below as well. So here, I think we're going back in time, but I did see something that I've never seen before, and I want to find it. What the hell is this? Actually, I've never seen this one either. Let's actually see this one. Whoa. It reminds me of this German company that made these waterproof drones, like you could actually go into the water with. So they're stating it's lower than 250 grams. And it looks pretty nice. I mean, you could do quite a lot up here. If it's powerful enough, you could put a big fat battery up there and just uh, lug that thing around and probably give you more flight time. All right, guys, and that's going to really conclude it right now. So I'll be flying more in the upcoming days and hopefully uploading more videos when I get more stuff in. And we'll be testing out all kinds of stuff and hopefully try to come up with the most uh, efficient, powerful quadcopter we could probably imagine. And um, yeah, we'll take it from there. And everything's linked down below. If you could check those out, those are great to support the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.